three questions that I think anyone needs to ask themselves when they're starting a business. The last one particularly prevails to e-commerce, um, is what are you deeply passionate about? Okay, Because going into business, doing anything that you don't fall in love with is pretty pointless because you spend so much of your day doing it. So there's got to be something you're really, really eager about. What drives the economics of that business model? What is your revenue stream going to be? It's all very well falling in love with cricket or rugby and saying, oh, I'm going to start at the best rugby site in the world. And you may have the best information site in the world, but your business model could end up being a advertising sales business because all you're doing is getting so many people to your site, but yes, you don't have any other revenue except for advertising revenue, for example. So really look at the economics of the business before you, before you decide what you're going to be doing. Um, and I think more in the e-commerce world than anything else, what can you really realistically be best in your market at? Because that is not so key in the offline world. There are very good restaurants next door to very good restaurants, and they both do well. But I think in the e-commerce space, number one is paramount to a certain extent. I'm talking e-commerce in terms of um, selling a product online, because that's my business. But it really is streets ahead of number two, generally speaking. You're looking at number one in an e-commerce environment, having at least twice as much market share as the number twos, number threes, etc. So is there a market out there that you realistically can be the best at in your little sector? Anyone can start an e-commerce business. The trick really is keeping it going and growing it. Because if you don't do that, you don't have anything. Anyone can get a website going, set it up, raise a bit of finance, do some marketing, and make a, make a first sale. It's the repeat business. It's the repeat customers. It's the innovation. It's the constantly growing new ideas, new technologies. And that's what's very, very important in the e-commerce sector. There are a couple of very basic principles that we learn as four- and five-year-olds that we tend to forget as we grow up. And I'm just going to share a couple with you, if I may. Share everything. Play fair. Don't hit people. Put things back where you found them. Clean up your own mess. Don't, don't take things that aren't your own and say you're sorry when you hurt someone. That, it, we all learn this at school. You know, For me, that was quite a while ago. But, but we, we tend to forget it. But those basic principles carry you through business as well. They really do. They carry you through life. But... <laughs> The best one is when you go outside, watch out for traffic, hold hands, and stick together. Okay? Because, because e-commerce is not about going it alone. You need the team that you develop around you is so much a part and parcel of what you're going to achieve. You can't do it alone. It's impossible. And that's something they taught you when you were four. Give away as much information as you can. Okay? Search is the interface of e-commerce these days. So you want to give away and make it easy to find as much information as you can about your particular area. Um, create a community on the website, a community of value, whether that's a blog, whether it's a wine club in our sense, whether it's um, whatever it may be, but try and create a community out of that website. Outsource to the customer as much as you can. Let them do their own tracking. You, know, you don't need a call center to check up on orders if you've got your own tracking system on the website, that sort of thing. In terms of basic business, treat assets as liabilities. We talk about um, cyber seller having virtual inventory. We don't carry stock. We base ourselves in the heart of the winelands, and we buy the wine 30 days after we've sold it, effectively. <laughs> because we get an order in, we phone the winery, we go and get the wine, the wine goes out, the customer's got it in about two, three days. We've been paid for it already, and we're on 30-day accounts with most of the wineries. So we're actually just a little bank, you know? <laughs> Everybody talks about email marketing, isn't it? Fabulous, viral campaigns, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The one thing about email marketing that, that you really have to be aware of, um, and I, I feel we're quite conscious of, is that it's, it's interruption marketing. You're basically getting hold of someone when they hadn't expected to buy a bottle of wine, and you're dropping into their inbox at a time when they're thinking about something else. So when you're doing that, A, you've got the obvious of being friendly and polite and chatty, but one thing, one email, we find works brilliantly. If, if we write a newsletter that has several different sections and different click-throughs and this and that and everything else, we may get loads of people opening that email, loads of people reading it, but we don't make any sales. 
if we, we, we have two newsletters. We have a general chatty, uh, this is what's happening in the industry newsletter that goes out on a Wednesday. But we get very little sales from that. That's a different type of marketing. That's more a sort of, um, we're still here, guys, if you need some wine. But the one that gets the sales is the spotlight on a Thursday. Focuses in one wine, one price, good reasons to buy it, order now. And the sales come flooding in. So it depends on your focus with your email marketing, whether you're just trying to get into their mind's eye and remind them that you're there, or whether you're actually trying to drum up sales from that particular email. So that's just little, a little example of, of being careful on marketing, email marketing. In conclusion, then, quickly, um, going back to golf. Sorry, I mean, it was about half the room, I think, has a familiarity with golf. So if you don't mind, I'm going to use that as an analogy in my conclusion in terms of setting up a business. Number one, don't, don't even consider golf unless you're passionate about it. And those who play golf will know what I'm talking about. Unfortunately, those who don't. But you don't play golf unless you really, 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 really like it because it's a nightmare of a game. <laughs> it's very similar to e-commerce. Um, you need endless patience on a golf course. Yeah? Um, and persistence. You've got to believe in yourself. You've got to realize that it's only 18 holes. You'll get there, and there will be that magnificent shot to the night screen. Um, you're not going to turn pro overnight, okay? Again, using a golfing analogy, it, I think there's an expression in business, it takes about five to ten years to be an overnight success. It's so true. It's so true. Things never happen. As, I mean, oh, there are exceptions to the rule, but generally speaking, it's, um, you're not going to be able to turn pro in your first year. A key thing here, and this actually came out from an article I was reading about eBay recently. I was talking to... Fred about um, Meg Whitman, but um, don't keep watching the leaderboard, okay? By that I mean be aware of your competition, know what's going on in the market and who's doing what and etc. but don't get hung up about it. Do what you do to the best of your ability and you'll play like Tiger Woods. It's, you know, it's at the end of the day, if you do what you do best and you manage all the other options, then it actually doesn't matter who's on the leaderboard because at the end of the day your name will be up there in lights and you'll be you'll be the leader of, of that particular sector so don't keep it don't get hung up about that um, play the ball as it lies again a golfing term but meaning play fairly treat people as you want to be treated in business that is just so unbelievably true it all comes back to bite you otherwise um, and in final conclusion again a golfing analogy keep your head down and follow through <laughs>